All right, let's talk about bit masking. Let's imagine that you have some byte and it has a bunch of bits in it. You're only interested in one, let's say B3. How do you get those other bits to go away so that you're left with only the one that you care about? Let's think of a specific example. Let's say that you care about PTBD3. So on the SO8, the port B data register is used to read inputs and to write to outputs. Let's say that that particular pin is tied to some input. You need to know whether that input is high or low. So we're reading a particular voltage. When we read that voltage, we don't want to know about all these other pins, which might be inputs or outputs. They might be talking to other things. We need those gone. Let's think, instead of throwing them away, let's think, how about we cover them up? We just put a piece of masking tape over top of them, and we say, we can't see them because we've covered them up. That is what we call masking. And that's where we get the name mask. When we talk about bit masking, I'm talking about covering up or throwing away some of the bits. So now, let's think about how to do this in terms of a logical operation. What we want to do is take each of the bits and change them either to zeros or to their original value. We know that we want to mask over some of them. So we want to know what operation do we need to use and also what values do we need to put into the other side of that operation. One side's going to be PTBD, but what values do we use to get rid of some of those things? First, let's go back to truth tables. A truth table works by saying, here's X on the left as rows, here's Y on the right as columns, and then the output of an operation is put where those question marks are. One of the first operations you'll learn is an AND. AND is true if and only if both X and Y are ones, otherwise it's zero. Another operation is the inclusive OR on the SO8, it's called OR A. The inclusive OR is true as long as one or more of the inputs is true. Another operation is the exclusive OR, uses a caret and C or EOR on the SO8 assembly. This one is true as long as the two inputs are different. That means that if both are zero or if both are one, the output is zero. If either one of them is one but the other one is zero, the output is one. So now let's think of each of them as an operation where we control Y, we'll set Y, and we'll try to figure out what that does to the input. For the AND operation, if we set Y to zero, well, the output's pretty boring. It's always zero. Meanwhile, if Y is one on the right column, if X is zero, the output's zero. If X is one, the output's one. The output is just X. It matches whatever X is. So then let's write that in text. X and zero is equal to zero. X and one, is equal to x. You can play the same game with the or and the exclusive or. For the or, the first column tells you that you get x back. The second column tells you you always get 1. But now the exclusive or, this is kind of a different thing because the first column is going to tell you you just get x back. The second column takes a little more thinking. We're going to introduce a notation. We're going to say if x is exclusive or with 1, you get not x or the opposite of x. So let's think what we're trying to do. We're trying to set some things to zero. Let's say, for example, PTBD7. We want that gone. We want to set to zero. Meanwhile, we have PTBD3. We want to leave that unchanged. Let's look back at our table and see what operation can do both of those things. Now, might be worth your time to pause the video. Come back in just a second. The operation that can do what we want is the AND. That's the one that can set some things to zero or leave them unchanged. So we can ignore those other operations for now, though when you're doing bit setting, toggling, those might come back. So now we've selected the AND operation. We know we're going to do a bitwise AND. All of those operations, by the way, are bitwise. They operate on each individual bit one at a time as if the other bits don't exist. So then for PTBD3, we want to leave that unchanged. So we know that we want a 1 right there. In the meantime, we also have these other bits. We want all of them to be zero. Well, x and zero is zero, so we want to set all of those corresponding bits to zero. Now that byte there, it's a decimal eight or a hex eight, that byte is known as the mask. Now for every byte that has named bits, they created a mask. And the way you get to that particular mask for that particular bit is you put the byte name followed by an underscore, followed by the bit name, followed by an underscore, 
and then an M to say we're talking about the mask. So PTBD underscore PTBD three underscore M is the number eight. And it has a one for the bit we're talking about and a zero everywhere else. So then in assembly, all we have to do is get the port B data value into a register where we can do logic. Well, there's only one, that's the accumulator. So the first thing we're gonna do has to be load that byte into the accumulator. Then the accumulator is gonna look like this. It's gonna have all those bits, only one of which do we care about. Then we gotta mask that off. We can do that with an and. We can do that with and number eight, and number hex eight, or and number ptbd underscore ptbd3 underscore m. Always gotta have that number. We don't wanna go anding with whatever's in address eight. We wanna use this number, this fixed thing, to go get that particular bit. Whatever form you choose, you're gonna wind up with a byte that looks like this, and that's the one we wanted to do. I'll say that personally, I find the mask notation to be a little clearer to read, particularly once you learn the system. It is more typing, but it typically is worth it, especially a week or two later when you're trying to figure out what you wrote. Now, that bites in the accumulator, so you're gonna figure out what to do with it. You might store it somewhere, you might do some tests on it, you might do some conditional branch statement. I couldn't know, but it's ready for you to work with.